got to confess that I saw some video of you a really long time ago on television. You were about this big and you were strapped into about a 200 pound foil board. And I was like, what the heck is this kid doing? And I'm just watching to see you eat it and you didn't. And then I saw you doing all these other sports, kite surfing, and you didn't eat it. And when I watched your clip when we were putting this reel together today, I said, this guy is going to be bigger than Ben-Hur. I'm calling now, bigger than Laird Hamilton, the next best thing now that Kelly Slater is going to soon retire. <laughs> and multi-talented to boot. So it's really an honour to have you here. And I'd like to know how the stay's going so far here at Turtle Bay. Um, you know, just to be able to come over to Turtle Bay is awesome, especially for the Sunset Pro because it's so close and makes it so much easier. But, uh, you know, thank you so much for everything you had to say about me. I don't know if it's that big of a thing because, um, you know, I'm just having fun. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a good time, especially so far. You know, that clip was actually from um, about, I think that was last winter I believe and um, it was uh, it was great but I really can't wait to uh, you know we're working on a new web series um, how did you end up in the position that you're and, uh, in perfectly so born in Maui amazing footage and, and excelling at what you do see that because it's it's gonna be oh, I'm funny so and lucky to have my uh, parents I don't even think I could pull any of this off without them and my brother because they are uh, you know my whole family has supported me since day one um, well I was born into a family that pretty much you know, moved to Hawaii because of windsurfing and surfing. And, you know, it was, I was kind of born into a family that, you know, it was either go in the water and have fun and try these sports, or you can sit on the beach and, uh, you know, enjoy yourself there. And I looked at the two, you know, deci decisions I had to make in my life. That was like my first big decision. Okay, do I go in the water or do I just play in the sand? And I was like, I'll go in the water. And then, Tried one sport and, you know, surfing at four and started windsurfing at six. And then when I was nine years old, I started kite surfing and towing into little waves and foil boarding. And um, I think they might have thought it was a mistake at first because it was hard for them to get me out of the water. It was like, oh, God, we have to be here all day now. The conditions aren't even good. Um, so, uh, no, I'm just so fortunate to be you know in this scenario i have because you know if you you can't really accomplish you know your greatest goals or things without a good backing good support whether it's your family or your close friends um it's just really important to have uh you know a good support system to achieve anything and especially in this day of age but looking at some of the images here there's obviously not a fear bone in your body is that true um i don't know especially like you know i think especially if you're going for bigger waves especially a wave like jaws if you don't go into um into it without fear then you're probably uh probably should go sit under a tree and think about it for a while because that wave is probably the most powerful wave in the world and you know it, it, it'll show you you show up in the boat early in the morning and um you know, like I can just explain one example. You know, every swell before, I'm basically like losing sleep the night before. I'm like, oh my God, please God, don't let me die tomorrow. But I want to go out so bad at the same time. It's like two sides of me are like, oh no, you know, the fear side of you're, you could get hurt. But then there's the other side that's like, but you could get the best wave of your life. So it's like, uh, I'll try it. You know, if I die, I had a great life, you know. But um, uh, it's just fun because, you know, I remember this last swell we had, it was big and they're like, oh, it's gonna be the biggest ever. And, you know, to add another factor into it, Jaws was typically known for, you know, windsurfing and uh, tow and surfing. And um, now guys are paddle surfing it and, um, you know, also kite surfing. And those are two kind of new, newer things you know guys have done it before but not on these bigger days so this was going to be a towing day big waves and guys were going to try paddling it and i knew you know out of respect you don't want to go out and tow when guys are paddling and you see these guys get great waves paddling it's like whoa i kind of want to try that and you know i've had a gun and i've always wanted to paddle big waves and paddling out and 
you know, that just adds another element because there's nobody that can get you out of there except <laughs> your two arms, pretty much. <laughs> Do you find now with the Stand Up Paddle Tour, there's a lot of young guys on there um, competing. There's a lot of talent coming up quickly. Do you find that that's one of the more competitive of the sports or is it, does it fall into the same sort of category? I mean, it's crazy. Like Stand Up Paddling, when I started, I saw Laird Hamilton doing it on the North Shore of Maui. And at the time he lived there and I was like, I was pretty much obsessed with anything those guys did, whether it was Laird, Dave, Robbie. I was like, well, if he's doing it, it must be kind of cool. Like, it looked fun, and I tried it and do it on the south side. Never saw anybody do it. I think I was nine at the time. And um, then all of a sudden, I see a few more people doing it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I never really considered it a sport. I thought it was surfing, but I was standing up, pretty much. And then, you know, as the years progressed, it was like, whoa, everyone's starting to like it. And all of a sudden, it's turning into this huge sport. And there's racing tour, there's a wave tour, and... Um, you know, it's like, whoa, this, this, you know, sport, and it wasn't really even a sport before, and all of a sudden, everyone's doing it, and it's crazy because, um, you know, you, it, you look back, and all the Hawaiian legends took to grasp of it, and they were basically, you know, the leaders of what was going on, and um, even still now, they charge huge wave sand piling, but it's crazy to see the transition from, you know, you know, the older legends, the watermen, to now we're getting to these young kids. Like, I would say the top, almost, almost the entire top 10 is like under 22 or something of the world tour, which is great because that's how sports grow is you have to have young blood in it. And, you know, they're pushing the limits. I would say in like three years from now, you know, the only way to win a contest is getting a mass barrel or doing a huge air variation, you know, air 360, kind of like surfing. I have a feeling it's gonna to get to that point and you know, possibly go beyond that because you can incorporate the paddle and you can incorporate having a bigger board for surface area and it's, you know, it's this whole thing. And I think, um, I don't even think standard paddling has been you know, scratched the surface yet. And it's gonna be really cool to uh, just go along for the ride and see where it goes because um, like Laird said, it's like in 10 years from now, it's probably gonna be one of the biggest ocean sports in the world, I would say. You said that you made the choice really early on to leave the sand bucket behind and hit the water. But I'm wondering at what age, if you can recall, did it actually click in your mind that that was what you wanted to do? It clicked in the minute I even got in the water. Like, I stepped in the water and I'm like, okay, I want to be a professional athlete. Like, that was it. I had, like, if when I was, like, five or four to five years old, who would ask me, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, those, those funny questions, I'm like, pro surfer. And that, was my, and that was my answer my entire life, like was that thing. I wanted to be like Robbie Nash and Laird. And it's crazy how it's all come together because, you know, the first wave I caught, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, you know, I'd always been riding the nose of my mom and dad's board and it was fun and great, but I wanted to do it myself. And I remember my dad was like, come on, Kai, try it. And I was like, no, no, I don't really want to try it right now playing the shore break and then they went on to this outer reef and um, they were out serving the outer reef and there was this little reef form in the inside and I looked at the board, looked at the wave, looked at the board and then didn't do anything and then all of a sudden grabbed it and just paddled up there to see what it was like and I swear I get the same feeling of riding a wave like that as I did when I caught my first wave because I remember thinking the wave was so big it was probably like waist high and I paddled in stood up and at the time it was weird I was goofy foot because my favorite surfer was Tom Carroll at the time and I was like I gotta be like him so I rode the wave and you know that was it the bug had gotten me pretty much and I was just like sold for life and then you know a couple years later I was really getting into the Jaws surfing I would watch every single Jaws movie ever made and like watch it literally like three times a day in a row. Like just start it over and watch it and watch it. And I noticed everyone was regular foot. So I was like, oh, I, if I want to surf Jaws like them, I have to be regular foot. So I just started surfing regular foot. And now I can switch back and forth, um, you know, regular being my, you know, principal side. But um, it's, it was just funny just how influenced I was by my, pretty much my heroes at the time. <laughs> You know, it's the best way I can explain riding a wave at Jaws, for example, is like you're on the tow rope and you're just like 
everything starts going slow-mo. I kid you not. It's like this weirdest thing ever. You're dropping into this huge wave and there's helicopters going around you and you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And then you get focused so much that you, like for me, I'll hit a bottom turn and everything will just go like a thousand frames per second. And like, I feel like for what at last for two seconds probably, feels like 10 minutes and I'm just, I can hear everything. I can literally like hear my hair hitting my ear or whatever and you know, feel the water drops going down my leg and hearing the water just like trickling off of the tail of my board. And it's just, I can go into such detail about like the feelings. You can, I can hear like water drops of the wave just falling next to me. And it's just the trippiest feeling because you're in such a moment where you're so focused and you're, um, you know, just, you know, nothing else really exists at that point. You know, any troubles you have at home or any troubles you've ever had or, you know, you're worried about something else. It's like, it doesn't really matter because you're, you're riding a 50 foot wave and that's what matters at the time. And it's really purifying because you can go home and it's kind of an eye opener. Like, whoa, I should basically just go one step at a time versus looking so far into the future. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. It's more just, I'm going to do what's right now and get it done. And it's, um, it makes time feel like you have all the time in the world when you take it that way. That's just what I've learned from riding a big wave, especially at Jaws, because you know, it's, you get that feeling. It doesn't happen every wave, but that one wave that you're in a position where you're like, well, can I make this? Am I going to get caught by it? That's when it happens. It's just like, <laughs> and then everything comes back to life. And it's like weird. The volume just gets turned up. As soon as you kick out, it's louder than it's ever been. And you're just like, whoa, take it all in. It's crazy. Are there a lot of kids now who look up to you as sort of a, a role model and a pathway to follow? Do you find that there's sort of unwanted pressure in a way to kind of be somebody and advocate something? Or are you able to just get on with it? You know, if I could inspire anybody to follow the dream or, you know, to, you know, take up sports like surfing or stand-up paddling or windsurfing, it's, you know, it, it just makes me feel good because I remember being that kid watching um, you know the best guys in the world and you know when they took their time to talk to me or be like hey what's up because you know talking to a six-year-old there's not a whole lot that you know they ask the most funny questions and I know I asked the most hilarious questions ever like where you know at times I'm sure they were like looking at me like what kind of question is that but um, it's, uh, it's really, really cool, especially, you know, for me, I'm, I look forward to going to different venues around the world and seeing kids that are just ripping, because I know it motivates me. When I see somebody else ripping, especially like, you know, a kid that's younger than me, it's like, gosh, I want to I wanna improve. I want to be my best, too. And, um, you know, that's just, I think, probably the most inspiration I get is from seeing people that are inspired by, you know, what I do, because you know, I've worked my whole life and my whole goal has been to uh, get to this point. And, um, you know, I'll, I don't really mind talking to anybody for, you know, as long as they want because I just, you know, love what I do. And this is what I've wanted to live for, basically, is not only riding big waves and having fun and, you know, I don't really want to keep it for myself. I just kind of want to, I want to, you know, be able to let everybody know how fun this is and that they should try it. Cause the ocean is the biggest playground in the entire world. And so, you know, why, why not take advantage of it? Because it's there for us and, you know, we came from the ocean originally, you know, and so why not go back in it and have more fun? 